Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome back. It's a little bit of a different landscape tonight. I'm actually just in my office, and it's not currently raining outside, which is quite nice. I'm doing a little bit of work. I'm editing the video that came out on Friday, but the herd test results have come back. Today's Thursday. They got picked up yesterday at about lunchtime, so it is pretty quick to, to get them back. That is pretty speedy. So just go through a few things. The somatic sow count is 97,000 average, which is probably not as low as I'd like it, but that's still not too bad. Uh, milk solids. So per cow we're doing 1.53. It's not too bad. Whereas if I go to there, this graph shows what we were doing now, the green one, and then the same herd test, which was the same time last year, we were doing 1.37. So we are doing more at the moment which is good to see and if I click down here to the heifers on average are doing a kilo or 1.02 and last this time last year they're doing 0.89 so it's good to see that we are ahead on that front but the reason I was on here I need to find a couple of cows in the morning so the cell count has come back and there's a 5 million a 4 million and a 1.5 million so I'm going to look for these three cows in the morning because they probably have mastitis that is higher than it should be way higher than it should be it's a little bit hard to see like this so I'll sort of talk it out and some people might find it interesting but the cow that did the most productions this 150 up the top here she's a six-year-old she did 2.43 milk solids uh, and she gave 20.4 liters so that's pretty good and then the next one down, she is a Frisian, or she's three quarter Frisian, whereas the top one's straight Jersey. Uh, and the Frisian one did 2.41, and it gave 24.3 liters. So those are a couple of the top cows. All these ones up here, I think there's 30 something, 37 cows that are doing over two milk solids, which is good. We need more cows like this, but these are the ones we want to breed from because they are are smoking along at the moment. Typically the older cows do do better, but there's a lot of four year olds here, which is good to see. So three, 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 you're a triple three. She's doing two point, or oh, almost 2.3. That's awesome, that's, that's real good. It's been blowing a gale all night with little, with little scattered showers coming through. It's pretty wet out there and cold it's really really cold today look how dark it is we changed to daylight saving the other day that means our clocks have gone forward going into spring and the mornings are just real dark i hate it when we change over even the cows are a bit fed up this herd's not so bad but the young cows when they're in before they were a little bit more flighty than normal it might be the wind uh, but they they were just kicking their cups off a lot more than normal they usually don't kick their cups off but every row there seems to be a couple so they're sort of fed up, they need a bit of sunshine too. I've written the three numbers on my hand there. I know, 2.30. Always comes in in the last row, so she'll be easy to find, it's just the other two. And annoyingly, when I bring the cows in in the morning, Dad usually cuts about, oh, not quite half a row before I get down into the pit by the time I sort of shut the gate, let the, let the first herd go. And the cow I was looking for, one for one, she was the very first cow in, so. What are the chances? But I did take the cups off, she had milked out for a little bit and you really want to get the first milk because that is the, or that'll sort of give you signs of which quarter might be infected. Uh, but I will just have to check here tomorrow because they looked all fine, like I, I sort of had a look at the milk and, and it was all milky, but yeah, I need to see, see it from the start. As I was cupping on before I realized, I'm pretty sure I know which cow 274 is. She's a little black and white cow something that looks there over there yeah there she is sweet that's easy instead of hunting through the rows trying to find her i can just wait till she comes in it's a little bit hard to see but straight through there right there there is a kiwi fruit block and my line of sight it's not very far away at all when the wind's blowing right i don't think you guys will be able to hear it i can't hear it at the moment oh yeah i can i can just hear it, it sounds like a helicopter rotor so they must have the fan on there. I know there's some green kiwi fruit over there and there is also some gold. And they put the fan on if they think there's gonna be a frost or I'm not sure why it's on at the moment. We definitely were gonna get a frost this morning with that wind, but maybe it's chilly and it's to help the fruit set or something. But when I got to the shed first thing this morning and it was dark, I could, I could hear it and it sounded like a helicopter. I don't know why it's going at the moment though. I don't know much about kiwi fruit to be honest. Look at that though, there's a bit of blue sky up there. That is awesome. It has sort of 
cleared up. Doesn't look like there's any showers around at the moment, but you never know. Come on. Pairs, they're both gonna come in at the end. This is the last row for this side. And that little black and white cow, she only comes in on this side here. She should come in now. Come on. Come in pretty tight. We'll have a little look. Those quarters are milking out. That looks pretty white. Oh, they all look fine. Well, she didn't like that, but I have got a sample from her here. And cow number 230 is this cow right here, so I'll get one from her as well. They will look pretty good. I think it's this one. So I've got a sample from each and what I did is I took the back left one from her or left hind quarter from her. I think it was just a little bit off colour than the rest of them. So she's also going into calf milk at the moment. I'm going to put her milk in the vet. And for this one here, all her quarters actually looked all right. But what I did is I took her left hind as well because I did have a question about this cow probably about four or five days ago. I did have a look at this this back left quarter and think, oh, there's, is there something sort of a little bit suspicious there? So that's the one I've taken it from, but I will find out tomorrow if it was the right one or not. This cow here came in without a weight on her collar, so I'm going to replace it with one of these new ones. How good does that look? So much easier getting it on with that new. Yeah, it does look a lot easier. Maybe a little, that's a little loose. There we go, nice and snug. Oh, that looks good. Really good. We've got my samples here, and the reason I took them is because I am going to run a bit of a test. So I'll grab a couple. Out of the box. I brought one of these master tests uh, last season and they are quite handy. I've started using it quite a bit recently now that I'm sort of less busy through carving. And that's what it looks like. So in those little packages is one of these and it's got a heap of little tubey looking things. So what you do is you pull that off, get the sample. This is 274. Tip it on to the plate and swish it around till it's filled all of those holes in. Then you tip the excess out just like that and then you put the lid on it. So this is the lid here. I don't think it's supposed to go a certain way. Just and push it on like so. That one is done. On to the next one. It is pretty quick. Whoops. You don't actually need much milk for it, that's the leftover tubes there and I tipped quite a bit of it out but once I've got these, I'll take them. And this is the little box here, so pull the lid off, see I've already run one, that was from the other day, and we'll put these in, so we'll put 230 in first. There is a right way you have to do it, see it's got the arrows at the top there, so you just put that in that slot like that and then you put that one in there. Put the lid on, clinical box start. And then once you get to this, uh, you put the number in two. It's pretty easy, 230. You put the quarter, rear left. 
and start. And we'll do the other one too. Box start, it's exactly the same thing. Two, front, rear, left, yes, start. And see down here, it's got a countdown, so 21 hours. This is one that I did the other day. It came through in its strep uberus, and then it says down here, treatment recommendation, intracillin MC. MC just means milking cow. But the reason I got it last season is I wanted to know what we were dealing with because we do have a lot of mastitis cases i wanted to make sure we're just a little bit more accurate and treating the cases or each individual case with what it should be treated with these tests these are 25 dollars a pop i think they are and you buy them on in boxes of 10 like just what i got out of the fridge i bought two boxes last season and i've pretty much just finished the first one now so during carving, when we were real busy, I didn't bother running them through the machine just because I just didn't have a lot of time. Uh, but now that we've sort of slowed down any mastitis case or anything that I'm just a little bit unsure about, I will get them and run it through just, just so that we know what we're dealing with. Exactly what we don't need, more rain. I think it's just eased up. It was raining pretty heavy before, but today it's supposed to be like this. We're supposed to get quite a bit. Today's actually the last day of September, and usually by now there's May's going in the ground the other night i seen darcy at the squash club and he says i think they'd planted about 40 or 50 hectares before this front sort of came through so that's all they've done so far this season and and they would have had more in the ground by then i know that the paddocks straight across from my house down there they are uh, they're all brown at the moment they sprayed them off because they were going to strip till them but if it doesn't fine up for they're predicting it's supposed to stay like this for about another week and then come right or at least a couple more days at least so there's going to be a massive rush of work on, contracting work on once once the weather does come right. I've actually shut two paddocks up for silage down there, one of the maize paddocks and another one. It was just getting a little bit long, so I have shut them up, but I was going to take them off once we get the maize in, so there's no real urgency for that, but <laughs> it's, going to be, it's going to be super busy. There'll be a lot of silage shut up around the place. However, I am feeding the calves at the moment. It's a little bit unusual because there's cows walking by me in the background and I usually wait till I finish milking till I feed the calves but this morning the All Blacks are playing Italy in the Rugby World Cup so Dad is milking at the moment and I'm going to feed the calves once I'm going to or once I finish I'm going to go and help him finish up so I can go back early and try and watch some of it probably won't see the start or the hucker but I'll be able to see some of it and watch it with the kids this is the older mob and there's probably a few in here that are that are getting pretty close to weaning. Usually wean them around mating time. A couple of bigger ones. So 80 kilos for jerseys, what they say, wean at. However, the results are back from the test. Oh, kickoff's only in a quarter of an hour, so I won't be getting the start of it. I'll chuck up here what I'm looking at so you guys can see it too. But it says for that Animal 230 results, bacteria ID, strep, uberus and uh, CNS then you go down the bottom to C treatment recommendations contact your vet so of course it's a Saturday <laughs> but I actually text Briar and asked what I do and she said give it intracillin and the reason it came back is that is because it's picked up sort of two environmental forms of mastitis but intracillin should should do the trick and then the other one which was 274 it's come back as uh, strep species unspecified and E. coli unspecified so the reason it says E. coli is because I've probably got muck or cow poo in the sample and she was kicking a bit so definitely plausible there uh, it's negative so it can't specifically say that it has it and also it says treatment recommendations call your vet so I asked about her turn and because the cell count's so high, the easy thing to do might be to give her an injectable form of mastitis treatment. And then we sort of, oh, it was a bit hard to see which quarter it was too. So then it sort of clears all that up. But it is it is cool knowing, because normally I would go and give a cow like that penicillin, or the only two penicillins that we use is pen clocks and masterplan. I think masterplan's penicillin. Just a stronger form, maybe. Maybe it's not. And... Now I know, well I've started using intracillin because a lot of these cows are, are coming up as intracillin milking cow treatments instead of pen clocks. 
So it is pretty interesting in that aspect. I need to go and see what the price of interest on it is compared to pen clocks and see if we're making a saving. Could be, I'll find that out and I'll chuck it up here. Hey. Well, they've got heaps. Yeah. Are the All Blacks winning. Who are you going for? Uh, all Blacks. Game over. 96 17. We we're always going to beat Italy, but that is the definition of a bit of a hiding. I don't like my chances against South Africa or Ireland this World Cup. I think Ireland is the, the team to beat. They're looking pretty strong, and it would be quite cool seeing a team that hasn't won the, the cup hold it up at the end of the tournament. But. I actually haven't watched that much rugby to be honest. I, I've sort of been following rugby league for the last couple of years. I just find it a little bit more exciting. I think it's sort of faster pace. Uh, all the penalties in, in rugby and penalty advantages sort of annoy me. So I sort of went off it a little bit, but I do watch the All Blacks when they're on and, and if I'm home. But in conclusion, because I was in a little bit of a rush this morning, I did treat that 2.30. I gave it intracillin, got the right quarter. So Actually, the cell count dropped, and this, this morning's pickup, it dropped by about 30,000 by putting those two cows in uh, in the test bucket into calf milk. So I've treated her. She's being on. The other one, I didn't treat. I left her. I definitely know I got the wrong quarter now, so it wasn't the back left. It was the front left. I, it felt a little bit hard this morning when I pulled the cups off. So I've sort of got two options. I can go and retest, or I could just treat it with like an injectable. The injectable... Ones are a little bit more expensive, but then they have like a less withholding period as well, and they do uh, they do do a pretty good job. So I haven't got any of that on hand, or I could run another test because then at least I know what I'm dealing with. But I think I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. I've, I've got to think about that. Um, and the other reason I quite like this this mastitis detector is because it's picking up the right mastitis, or most of the time, and it's also telling me the right drug. So hopefully we're going to get better results from it, you know, using the right drug. Hopefully it's going to treat these cows better than just chucking anything in there and uh, and sort of hoping it works. Before I actually bought it, I spoke to my auntie because they've got one they farm down in Southland near Winton there. They're not technology, or she said they're not technology people, but she also said she would never farm without one of these again. She just finds it... Uh, brilliant, you know, you're finding the right mastitis and you're giving it the right treatment Therefore you can be saving money and you can also be having a better effect rather than just throwing any penicillin in it and hoping for the best So that is that is sort of the reason I got it and it is pretty interesting too all this Information that I get sent in the in the email actually goes to the vets as well So they can have a look and and then at the end of the season you can be like oh, well, you know, you've had this many cows um, you know, all through environmental mastitis or, or you can just keep track of it so it is pretty cool there's so much cool technology out there in the dairy industry you've really just got to pick what fits your system and it all does come at a cost that machine cost me $1300 which I thought was, was pretty reasonable and then like I said earlier on it costs $25 per test but fast forward a couple of days and look it's actually a bluebird behind me so what happened with that Cow number 274, I tested her front left quarter and it came back positive for CNS, I think it was called. Which recommended to treat it with this albiotic. I've never actually used this before, but that's what it says, so I have. So hopefully that clears her up. She is a nice little cow. There's also one other bit of technology that I wouldn't mind getting as well, and that is a digital mastitis reader. We used to have one, a Technifarm one, where you'd squirt each quarter onto or a quarter at a time onto the little tray and then you'd press the button and it would give you a digital reading it was awesome we used it heaps but it broke we sent it away to get fixed and it 